Hey, it's Russ from the Infectious Groove Podcast and Vinyl Channel. Today we're talking about the Bad Boys from Boston and five underrated Aerosmith tracks, in my opinion. Let's get into it. Aerosmith is one of those bands that has a billion hits and uh, several different decades of styles and there's very many people who argue that old Aerosmith is better than new Aerosmith or new Aerosmith is better than old Aerosmith. There's some folks on either side of the camp that won't listen to either side. I've got five tracks across their discography that I think are really, really, really underrated uh, from very popular albums that for whatever reason, I don't think these songs get enough love. So I'm going to count them down for you. These I think are the five most underrated Aerosmith tracks that there are. This one here, I'm going to start off with a cut from Aerosmith Rocks, which this is kind of a hit, but I don't think it gets anywhere near the love that it should get. And that is the song Last Child. Aerosmith does bust it out uh, live, fewer, lesser and lesser uh, as the years go on. And some folks really do know that song, but I don't think it gets talked about near as much as it should, especially when you talk about classic Aerosmith. You always hear about uh, Sweet Emotion, even Back in the Saddle from this album, uh, Walk This Way, Dream On, of course. And Last Child just really doesn't get talked about near as much as it should at least in my opinion i think it's just a fantastic rocking swampy uh, aerosmith cut with uh, everybody in the band on fire doing great at what they do and it's just one that doesn't get talked about enough in my opinion the next one is from an album I actually don't own on vinyl. I could be wrong, but I don't believe it's been pressed on vinyl just yet. But hopefully the album cover will appear here. That is the album Just Push Play. And the first track on it is a song called Beyond Beautiful. Now, of course, this is in the later Aerosmith era. And even if Just Push Play was on vinyl, it's probably an album I wouldn't go ahead and seek out to buy on vinyl. Um, I, I really don't like the whole record and even the single that was big off of it just isn't uh, doesn't connect with me. But the first track on that record, Beyond Beautiful, I am stunned that most Aerosmith fans don't know that song or that it hasn't even been talked about on you know best of lists and things. Um, although I'm not a huge fan of the record itself, the opening track, Beyond Beautiful, is just a really, really, really strong Aerosmith cut uh, filled with great, great Steven Tyler lyrics that he's known for his turn of phrase and really, really good performance again from everybody in the band. And um, just is one of those tracks that I don't know if it's the overall quality of the record, maybe it got panned when it came out or uh, the single pretty much was the only thing that, that got a lot of airplay. But for whatever reason, Beyond Beautiful from Just Push Play, definitely an underrated Aerosmith cut in my opinion. Next up is a track that actually appeared first on Aerosmith's very first album, and it's a song called Moving Out. But I personally prefer the version that's on here, which is Aerosmith Classics Live 2. Now there's the two albums for this. There's a blue one and a red one, um, Aerosmith Classics Live and Classics Live 2. And these albums are extremely panned by uh, non-fans and fans alike as being um, just not good live albums. Uh, I personally think there's a certain charm to each of the Classic Live albums and definitely two because of they open with Back in the Saddle on here, they go in to Walk This Way, they close out the side with Draw the Line, but sandwiched in between Walk, the li Walk This Way and Draw the Line is moving out from their first record, which is just a, a great example. Again, that swampy uh, Aerosmith brand of rock that really gets overlooked because their first album is pretty much known for Dream On and which is a great track but there are other really really good tracks on that record and I really like the version that's on this live album um, especially where it's sandwiched between uh, two big hits on there it really allows people to say oh wow this is one uh, one i don't know so moving out whether you listen to it off of their debut record or this version here off of classics live 2 definitely an underrated aerosmith cut for me all right we're going to get into my top two 
Aerosmith underrated cuts. Now both of these are from Geffen albums, so this is from what many consider to be later or quote unquote new Aerosmith, even though these records came out in the 80s. The number two most un underrated Aerosmith track, in my opinion, is the second track on the Pump album, uh, which comes after a fantastic opening track, Young Lust, and right before the lead single, Love in an Elevator, there is a song on this record called F-I-N-E Fine, which is a a monster monster Aerosmith track that gets little to no attention um, there were massive singles off of this actually both of the top two records had massive singles so you have love in an elevator the other side Janie's got a gun and these huge singles that were off the record really overshadowed some of the fantastic work that was on the non-singles. So if you get a chance to check it out the second track off of pump F-I-N-E fine just an absolute example of Aerosmith doing everything right all in one song and doesn't get enough love. So it's definitely my number two for most underrated Aerosmith tracks. My number one Aerosmith underrated track comes from Permanent Vacation, which again was known for massive, massive singles. You've got uh, Dude Looks Like a Lady, Angel, and Ragdoll as well and just a fantastic record for radio play it was really the album that launched Aerosmith back into the mainstream following their success with uh, the remake of Walk This Way with Run DMC and it's a really really good album overall um, I think the album as a whole is underrated but there is a cut on this album that kicks off side two called Hangman Jury that is just a great example of Aerosmith thinking outside the box kind of uh, revisiting their roots like in the mid 80s if a lot of Aerosmith fans that loved the stuff from the 70s didn't like the slick production and the radio friendliness of Dude Looks Like a Lady or Ragdoll you have a track like Hangman Jury that kicks off side two that is a excellent example of Aerosmith coloring outside the lines doing more of that again to use the phrase swamp rock like that very uh, down and dirty rock style um, sounds like it could be right at home on an earlier Aerosmith record or could be uh, at home even on like a, a early 70s Stones record just fantastic fantastic song that really no one even talks about uh, Aerosmith did perform it on their MTV Unplugged and most people don't even know Aerosmith did an MTV Unplugged, but they did it in the very infancy of the program back when it was a 30-minute program. And I was overjoyed to see that they included that song because it very much lends itself well to the format. But in my opinion, Hangman Jury is the number one underrated Aerosmith track that there is. Those are just five, like I said, Aerosmith has been going on for decades and decades and they have so many different phases of their music and so many different diverse tastes within their fan base so please make sure to leave a comment let me know what you think of my five choices am i just way off the reservation or you don't even like those songs or uh, do you have maybe uh, two or three or five others that i need to check out that i haven't dug into enough yet if you get a chance, make sure you hit like on the video, double check, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and make sure to get into that discussion below. Thanks for watching. <laughs>